Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Neo 2. You know what I forgot to do last time that would have made Osakabe go even faster? I forgot to equip my new Yatsunokami Soul Core. You thought it was strong before? This one's level is like three times higher than the one I've been using for the better part of something like 25 episodes now. Look at that difference. Goes from 195 attack and 167 defense to 239 and 205. Numbers go up. Brain secretes the happy slime. <laughs> and now, with that little bit of housekeeping out of the way, let's get on with the cherry blossom viewing in Daigo. Daigo Temple, in the Fushimi area of Kyoto, started out as a sacred location for mountain ascetics, practitioners of Shugendo, but through the patronage of successive emperors and other influential individuals, it later became a major temple. Its expansive grounds at the foot of the mountain of a mountain holds numerous temple buildings. Although devastated during the war, the complex is being restored with the help of Tikichiro. Over 700 cherry blossom trees have been relocated from Mino and Awari, regions Tikichiro has connections to, and it seems he's looking forward to seeing them all blooming as spring arrives. の大手マシだよ。とんだ3問芝居だな。先に行って。Love that cutscene. Features some really great mocapping and camera work. Uh, we have a little buddy right behind the starting shrine. Oh, yeah! And we have another gorgeous level. Lord almighty, that's pretty. And this level also happens to feature my favorite boss in the game. I said Shuten Doji was way up there, uh, and so is Tatari Moke and Kame Itachi and some others, but no, this is definitely my favorite one. Neo 2's endgame goes so hard. At this point in Neo 1, even a couple of hours prior to this point in Neo 1, the game had started to drag, and I don't think it finishes all that strong. But now, They've learned a lot of lessons, and it just goes up a gear from here, or from that point, and I really appreciate that. Uh, the end game of Neo 2 is a treat. And this level is also fairly tough. There's some really difficult fights here, and... Oh, I want to make sure that I'm not getting ambushed from behind these folding doors. Unfortunately, that does mean I lost my train of thought. This is okay. We have multiple spearmen from all sides. 
We don't want to press forward too far because that will just aggro another one who functions as kind of a mini boss. Teacher always has to have his royal guard handy. But the Onruki, Onryuki, Soul Core makes short work of crowds. And there's a Scampus back here! Oh, let's pet the kitty. Pretty kitty. I want to pet the kitty. Now about that mini boss. I'm misremembering where he was. Oh no, he's just a one room further than I thought. So if this knocks him on the ground, great. He's worried that it might only knock the helmet off, but I think that only applies to arrows. Oh, you. If that's what you want to do, then I too will be rude. I gave him a chance to repent for his sins, and he spat in my face. So we sent a snake after him. We Cleopatra'd him, except with something much bigger than an asp. Now I heard... Oh, there you all are. Oh, this is not what I wanted. Oh, God! Wanted to be the one initiating that fight. This is what mid-stance on the Switchclave was made for, though. These nice lateral sweeping attacks. Perfectly calculated. <laughs> so as to not get hit, because uh, the invulnerability frames of that animation do not start immediately. You have to actually go into the cinematic camera angle before you have any iframes. And with crowds of enemies, you tend to get hit out of the startup of that animation if you're careless. This is a really sneakily hidden room. Which unfortunately really only conceals a treasure chest with a Magina! Hey, buddy! Love mimics. Oh, and we even got a soul core for it. Not exactly too practical, but hey, it's always nice to have around. This is the little dude I heard right before all of the chaos kicked off. Especially the opening of this level is gorgeous. Like, there's some really cool sights to see later on, but this is my favorite part. Because they can go so dense with all the, the all the cherry blossom trees and the, the particle effects of the falling cherry blossoms everywhere. Did that just say we reached max familiarity with Echoing Thunder? Because that's the, uh, that's, that's our hatchets, which we were not using. I'm now a little curious about how exactly familiarity builds up. Because I thought you had to actually be actively using the weapon, but apparently you can have it equipped as your sub-weapon. Oof. Okay. Okay, sir. Diplomacy has failed. I would say that this is the calm and beautiful part of the level, and the real pop-off starts soon. Yeah, 
Anything but an Ubume, please. Ah, yeah, Magatsu. They love to start off that way. They're like uh, Platinum Games bosses. Where as soon as they are able, they're attacking you. Even if it's right out of a cutscene. <laughs> But you can always use that aggression to your advantage. Uh, the more aggressive an enemy is, the more predictable it is. And that is the reason that we actually need to fight the Magatsu Warrior. Because of that locked gate that we now get to double back to. He was guarding the corpse with a Sambo in key. You know what? It's been a long, long time since I stopped to help out my little purple buddies, the Sudama. I've been kind of ignoring them for a long time in the LP now. Well, I don't think that was actually worth it. An Ochoco Cup and Lantern Plant Fruit for a Red Spider Lily. We kind of traded down there. I guess that's what we get for neglecting the little dudes. And this, that's such a sneaky ambush they try to pull. I love it. Can you tell I'm in a really good mood because of this level? And because the end is in sight. And now, things get even better. Momio took care of the Snekos, and now she's even rejoined us. So now we get to go through the rest of the level with some help. Counterintuitively, even though we have help from Momio now, the second half of this level is much harder, even with her accompanying us. And before we get moving, we have another beautiful pink-lit alleyway full of cherry blossom petals falling around us. Ah, so good! <laughs> Mumio can keep him distracted. We're dealing with the annoying problem. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Shit. Mumio! She pushed him out of range for the critical attack. Yeah, and this guy just gets to get bullied. And we get the smithing text to craft his goofy helmet. Now we get to some visuals and some uh, some terrain effects that are kind of reminiscent to the end game of Neo One. Why do we have to stop to Kichiro? He's just doing his part for the planet and planting trees. How did none of those hit the weak point on its shoulder? Okay, you get off the bridge. Or that, that works too. Oh, oh, oh. 
にもわからぬことがあるとあろうこの先は何が起こるかもはや読めぬ用心するがよい Never quite sure which of these are breakable and which ones aren't. This one should be, yeah, okay. I think the non breakable ones are a little bit more dull in color. Uh, and this brings us to our next shrine. There's still quite a bit of level left to go. And at least one or two more shrines plus some shortcuts to open up. And then we get to the main event, and I am so excited for that. Before we engage with the Mizuki, we're going to do our best to clear things out and make life. As uncomplicated as possible, starting with the Roku Roku. Now that we've done our due diligence, there's not too much else to worry about. Mumio! Right. Oh, okay. I can't make fun of Mumio. I got hit too. Fair enough. Oh, there was more. Well, Mumio, that's for you. Uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna not let a Mizuki kill me. And just take advantage of the fact that it has no stamina left. I think I might need to help her out. Yeah. I'm helping! Boy, still has quite a bit of health to chunk through. But now that Mumio and I are both on at full time, he's gonna melt. Couldn't quite reach the horns, though. Ooh. There we go. Notice bigger enemies tend to have much easier to counter burst attacks than smaller enemies. Okay, so we can go through here, or we can take that branch that spirals up to the next floor. There are multiple ways that you can progress forward here, so either way is good. This one lets us bully more dudes. <laughs> I love that. Love that so much. Aw. When they recover one split second before you're about to initiate the critical. And hey, it's that shrine. have so many friends hanging out on it now. And yeah, we'll put some into stamina, we'll put some into health. I guess we'll finally start putting points in those stats at the end of the game. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is the really fucked fight. Because it's an Enki and two Raku Rakubis at the same time. Which can get kind of chaotic. I've dunked on the Raku Rakubis in, in Neo 2 for being much easier to handle than the Neo 1 ones. But when you have to fight two of them at the same time and another big yokai? Yeah, okay. They get a little bit of their their uh, mystique of danger back, but we have some assistance, so it takes a little bit of the heat off of us. So we can go and deal with preferably one problem at a time, like that. 
And now, it's all uphill from here. <laughs> Did you get it? We went up a hill. But the anti-silver lining to that is Mumyo is no longer going to accompany us. You? No, you're not sweeping me. And you're also not going to get the chance to heal. And we still have quite a bit of climbing to do to reach to Kichiro. At the height of the mountain, at the height of this... of this... palatial estate. Oh, I didn't expect that to one-hit him. I would have been happy if he had just fallen to the floor for uh, a critical hit. But that works, too. Ow. Sir. Forgot some of them are magic users. <laughs> that did shit all for me. This man is the iron wall. There we go. Oh no. Oh, we're not gonna be able to take advantage of, of his low stamina. Wait, maybe. Okay, good. Good, good, good. And then there are so many ways that you can go in this level that are all valid that it makes my option paralysis go nuts. Uh, however, I think... Oh, hello. So there was a point in backtracking down here. Wait, am I mistaken? Is this... I'm actually not sure if that's the area... No, it's not. I thought that was the area we fought the two uh, Raku Rakubis and the Anki in. This is a little bit of a complicated fight just because of the positioning. Uh, and as we all know, I get super uncomfortable fighting things on bridges and ledges. So I'm going to be as careful about this as possible and try to keep my composure and not roll off an edge. Easier said than done against an enemy that... Uh -oh is a little bit durable. It'd be different if we could blow it up in one combo, but we have to we have to put a little bit of respect on this one's name. Okay. Getting better about not doing stupid things in a panic when the potential for a falling death is, uh, in the air. So now this area always confuses me just a little bit. Hello! Oh god! I got lucky there. They always use these items on the ground and vulnerable looking enemies so well as bait for traps. Neo does this really, really well. And it's one of Team Ninja's favorite tricks in this series. Aww. I don't believe there is a need to go into that shrine, because I don't think that's the way forward. Could be wrong. Let's... Mm, oh no, that... nope. Almost got into a fight, almost picked a fight that I didn't need to pick. However, we do need to hit the Dark Realm up here. So we see a Magatsu patrolling around, we see another Yokai in the background, and we see a crystal. 
So while the Magatsu warrior is somewhere else on his path, ah, no, he's joining the fun now. Thought I would have a little bit more time to uh, to deal with the other ad. Ah. Okay, that was a little bit hairy. It almost went poorly for us, but we're fine. That is going to be a critical hit. Good. You could also completely skip that Magatsu Warrior if your timing is good, if you're patient enough to wait for uh, his patrol to end, because the thing generating the Dark Realm here is actually that crystal. Oh, we're almost there. But this level is relentless. I think we've gotten through most of the hard parts of it, though. Boss aside. Right, good. I think we're good to take a small rest, and then we aren't too far off now. We're getting boatloads of Amrita, though. I think that's because we're technically a little underleveled. Another thing that Neo 2 does really well compared to the first game is uh, the the tuning of the critical path. It's much more in line with where you would naturally be just through um, uh, playing the game with a minimal amount, amount of side quests. Oh, this is the Raku Raku B bit. I've circled around. That's part of why I get confused with this level. Is because there are a lot of paths that just feed back around into each other. Which is just a consequence of it being so open-ended and giving you so many ways to get to your objective. Then, is there... What is this? Oh, wait, no. I'm dumb. This is where I came from. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, no! I haven't looked in the upper right through the whole level, and I totally forgot that it's just behind the shrine. There is one more courtyard worth of fights, uh, and the goal for this one, for me, is just to do this without expending any resources, not so much as a life leech talisman. But, if the worst should happen, it's not going to be too much of a loss. I just want to try to preserve as much as possible. Switch elements mid fight. I don't usually see that. Ah, that's a problem. Well, one of them probably dropped an elixir, to be fair. Oh, are we gonna break his guard just through these strong attacks? Hell yeah. And I love the extra projectile you get once it reaches max corruption. Oh well, seven elixirs for this fight plus the life leash talismans. That'll be plenty. Oh, 
手付けだお前の土俵に。Beautiful location for a pretty bittersweet fight. Oh, when did I put these on? Just have to find an opening to switch back because it takes a second. So, this is the real Takichiro fight. Granted, it's not actually really real Takichiro, ironically. Remember, he's being possessed by a Takemaru, an ancient powerful yokai. Uh, that projectile attack is such a great opening to get in and do tons of damage from behind. He's still not super hard, but this is much more of a real fight than before. Uh, he's still got his parry too, but the funny thing is, it's actually a little easier to deal with in this fight. We have to. Close that distance so he doesn't keep doing that. There we go. Oh, I love that. That's so cool. It's also a great opening. And Takichiro will switch between all fire and all lightning. And lightning form, there we go, is much, much diff more difficult to deal with. Uh, oh, I don't want him doing a critical hit on me. That would have been death. So we had to hit the eject button. We'd open the emergency escape hatch. Preserve a little bit of that meter and just clean up. Like I said, really bittersweet. You really come to know and and sympathize with Takichiro throughout this game. So now all that's left to do is move on with the end of the mission.
待してる量は滅びぬ I bet you all forgot about Kashin Koji. I told you this level had my favorite boss in it. And yeah, Takishiro is a fine fight. Better plot point. But did you really think that I was that hyped about that fight? Okay, Kashin Koji is a mage. He's got hyper armor, so you have to do a lot of hitting and running, weaving through projectiles like that. Uh, he's got a rad teleport and pretty cool movement. You know how I love a good dash and a good after image on that. Look at that! Uh, he's got a cool design. The pace of the fight's incredible. And it just gets more and more stressful and intense. Now the fight is about to pick up. Plus, I think him having hyper armor is crucial because he's one of the few humanoid enemies that you can't just bully. So you have to really engage with the fight on its own terms. And his moveset is enormous too. And on top of all of that, now he gets to start summoning clones. They die in one hit, but they have all of his moves. So if you don't manage them, all while he's teleporting around, trying to grab you and doing combos at you. Look at this. This is what we've been saving Yatsuno Kami for. To clear the path. Hell just breaks loose the longer this fight goes. Shit, <laughs> yeah. One of the best parts of Neo is how good the movement and the dashing feels, and the speed of everything, and I think this fight really emphasizes that in the best way. Kashin Koji. Unfortunately, we're just about at the end of that health bar, so there's not much time left to savor it. Aw, uh, it turns out he was actually just a chump. Or is he? Now things get a little bit harder. He has even more moves now than before. It's permanent Dark Realm, and he will clone himself even more. The silver lining is that, as you can see from the few hits we've landed already, he has way less health. So it becomes a burn phase. A really intense burn. to dodge stuff coming at you constantly. You risk getting surrounded, and then there's the lightning sword attack? Good, we want it a little bit messy. So the nice thing about this is they don't make you refight to Kichiro to get back to Kashin Koji. If this was Sekiro, they wouldn't be nearly that kind. Remember having to refight Genichiro every time you took a stab at Sword Saint? God, that fight is still so good, though! I channel Ishin the Sword Saint every time I want to get hype. How my blood boils! Mmm, face me, Kashin! We have to- ooh, we're gonna get caught a little by that. And if we're slowed because of the debuff. Still only on the first health bar, so it's not too bad yet. Still on the first phase of the first health bar, that. I love his staff, too. I'm glad that that's a part of the fight as well. It's got a great design. Yeah, that's, that's what we call big damage. All right, Snake Lady, help me out with this. Does an excellent job of clearing most of those illusions out. Crowd control is the name of the game at this point. And also avoiding the many, many debuffs he has access to. He has access to every single element. And also poison. 
never ready to burst counter that one. Uh, luckily, the clones for that attack do not stick around. They're just there to sort of discourage you from trying to go in. So now, we regain our composure, we take a quick breath, we buff up, we debuff the boss, and prepare to swing. Aw. And really watch that grab. He essentially force chokes you, if I remember right. Yeah, we have to be careful with stamina now. Especially now that stamina management has gotten a little bit tougher. So, that sacred water will pay dividends for us right now. I love watching that health bar get chunked down in this phase, just from single hits. Man, there's so much dashing and dash canceling. Mmm! You get to really feel all the best parts of this game during this fight. That is gonna be a wrap. Like I said, how my blood boils. <laughs> it's a great fight and a great level. And that means there is one real mission left in the game. Hey, Good, good, good. Now this next mission, I specified that uh, there was one real mission left in the game. This next one is basically a cutscene. Back in the Byoto Inn, where uh, Tamamo no Mai and Shuten Doji were unsealed, returning to the scene of the crime. So I will leave you all with what happens next. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one and enjoy.